First of all, I want to apologize to Sensei. I was going really strong with my Sensei training all through 2023, but this year I got really distracted by all the other brain tech coming on the market. So it's really hard to keep up. And to be honest, I just wasn't as disciplined with my Sensei training as I should have been. But for the past month since I got back from Paris, I've been a lot more consistent with its photobiomodulation and neurofeedback training. And wow, every time I come back to the Sensei, I'm really surprised how I feel after every training session. When I first got it back in 2023, they had limited population brain data from their users, but now that they've been out for over a year, they've been coming out with some really impressive data collected from the brains of their users with their permission to do so. This data is really important for the brain training industry, the mental health treatment industry, and really neuroscience in general, in my opinion. Because I think when most people buy these devices, they imagine all the potential benefits of doing brain training, of having improved memory, increased intelligence, faster thinking speed, maybe feel less stress throughout the day, and have increased motivation and focus to accomplish your goals, which all sounds really awesome. But in the history of these brain training devices, there has been a lot of controversy with some people saying that they're just a gimmick, that they don't actually accomplish or deliver on what they're advertised to do. But that's what's so great about this closed system that Sensei has designed because it's really set up to collect and report a bunch of data to take the guesswork out of if it's actually working or not. In this video, we'll review what the Sensei headset is, what it does, and the recent data published by the company that covers improvements in sleep, overall brain health, and some other brand new measurements that you literally can't get anywhere else in the market right now. I really wish I had this headset five years ago when I was practicing psychiatry as a US Navy active duty mental health doctor, but at least it's here now, so let's talk about its specs. The Sensei headband has three gold-plated brainwave sensors that go through your hair and are really sensitive because they demand a great connection to get the highest quality data for measurement. In fact, there's two different Bluetooth connections from your headset to your phone in order to get all the high quality brainwave data to your phone to be analyzed. The headset has seven red light photobiomodulation lights, and in the boost settings, it actually adjusts the stimulation of the red light based on your own personal brainwave metrics. We know that red light therapy goes through the skull and actually activates neurons through their mitochondria, and flash Seeing these lights can have different levels of boost and activation on the neurons below. The brainwave sensors measure voltage changes of your brain from your scalp in a method called electroencephalography or EEG for short. The brainwave data is separated into different frequency bands. Delta and theta are when you are sleeping and drowsy. Alpha is relaxed attention. And beta and gamma can be anxiety, mental processing, or enhanced awareness. The Sensei uses music through its headphones through a process called neurofeedback to train your brain into specific targeted brainwave frequencies during mindfulness meditation sessions. Keep your attention only on the musical it also measures things like peak power in your alpha band and spikes in your brainwaves called ERPs that measure the health of your brain. Your alpha peak is the area within the alpha brainwave band that has the most amplitude. This has been correlated with age and cognitive performance. The photobiomodulation of Sensei actually aims to increase your peak alpha. Sensei also measures spikes in your EEG signal called ERPs during the reaction time testing that it has you do with the testing box before and after completing the brain training modules to track your progress. The box does what's called a flanker test, which is pushing a button on the correct side that the middle arrow is showing. The arrow goes left, you hit left. If the arrow goes right, you hit right. But if the arrow isn't pointing any direction in particular, you're not supposed to push any buttons at all. So that tests both reaction time and impulse control through the speed of your reaction. And actually, and this is an important point, it actually records your ERP brainwaves when you recognize which way the arrow is pointing. Sensei has published quite a bit of data so far on the brain metrics of their clients in several white papers. What's so cool about this device out there in the real world is that they can conduct these mini studies on hundreds of people without them ever having to go into a neuroscience lab. They then compile that data anonymously with permission given by the user. Let's take a look at this Sharp Mind Mission protocol. Now, I want to stress several points here that makes the Sensei different from what we've seen in the past. 
Number one, they combine four different synergistic interventions to get these results. And number two, it is a closed loop and continuous learning system, meaning that throughout the trial, the Sensei headband is actually sensing your specific brainwave metrics and altering the interventions as you go along to get the most profound change out of your brain that is possible. There's been a lot of companies in the past that have tried to do this, but it seems like Sensei has really broken through with their product design, their science, and their AI analysis of the brainwave patterns. On this Sharp Mind protocol, they're using SMR feedback from the CZ region. They also uptrained peak alpha using gamma neurofeedback within the PZ and FZ regions. And they also used HRV biofeedback and photobiomodulation boosters. This makes sense why Sensei went with this design. That CZ position on the top of your head seems really important for the SMR neurofeedback training that I noticed that they're using in quite a few of their protocols. And it's really amazing to see this AI system adapting to your own individual brain metrics. Because if there's something that we've learned within the past 10 years, it's that brainwave biomarkers are highly personal to the individual. So you can have two different people and stimulate them with the same frequency of photobiomodulation, but one person might respond a lot more favorably to that frequency than the other based on their baseline brainwave states. For example, if you customize the frequency of the red light pulse to their specific peak alpha, you're gonna get a lot more of an effective change. This was a really nice white paper. They talked about the age-related brain changes that we all experience with time. Subjectively, we tend to experience declines in memory and mental clarity. And objectively, we know that there's a general slowing of our EEG brainwave patterns. We end up with a lower peak alpha, lower alpha rhythm power, and also a higher power in the lower frequency bands like delta and theta, which basically means over time, the power of the slower brain waves increases as opposed to the higher brainwave frequencies. Now in this study, Sensei had 42 different participants with memory and mental clarity issues before they started the Sharp Mind protocol. They did this over the course of 54 days. They needed to do 2.5 sessions per week. And on average, they completed 12 HRV biofeedback sessions and 13 photobiomodulation sessions. Based on before and after ERP testing, they found an increase in processing speed by an average of 10% an increase in reaction time by 7%, and a reduction in errors by a whopping 40%. And again, what's really cool about these reaction time testings is that they are actually looking at the brainwave patterns called P300 of the ERP, which is actual voltage changes in their brains when they recognize the patterns on the box. And 73% of participants reported improved mental clarity and memory after the training. And that was compared to a control group. I really like how they did the ERP testing because it's not like they are practicing doing the flanker test all throughout the trial. It's just before and after. And with the control group, there wasn't any statistical improvement. So you can really see that it was just the brain training that actually improved their ERPs over time. They have published additional white papers. In this paper, they took a look at sleep. 77% of people reported improved sleep. And the flanker test metrics demonstrated a 7.5 improvement in reaction time. Now with this, I would have liked to have seen Aura Ring or other sleep sleep data tracking sleep efficacy improvements. So it would have been better to have more objective data on the quality of the sleep and related to the brain training with the sensei. But seeing all these results on paper as a clinician and a researcher such as myself is really impressive. But what matters most ultimately is how you, the user, feel before and after doing these trainings. Well, based on that point, I can only offer my own personal subjective experience what I can tell you is when I first got this device, I didn't like it as much because I was more accustomed to taking an active role with my meditation sessions. I've practiced Kriya Yoga over the years where you activate different energy centers and try to move energetic feelings up your spine and back towards your pineal gland. I really enjoy that practice, but I noticed that when I tried to do it with the Sensei, the neural feedback would give me a lot of negative feedback and I wouldn't feel much different after the sessions. But as I used it more, I learned to be just okay with sitting back and being more passive. Even the recording says, relax and pay attention only to the music. Keep your attention only on the musical notes. So you really want to allow the photobiomodulation and neurofeedback to just change your state as you sit there without doing anything active on your end except trying to be as mindful and aware as possible. If you can just be fully present and aware and sit there and focus on the music, it will really guide your brainwaves into feeling just awesome towards the end of the session. 
What I've been doing is I'll do my journaling before, then I'll sit for 15 to 20 minutes doing a sensei session, and it will just totally shift my state into being very aware, but also a sense of euphoria as well. And after sensei sessions, I've meditated more and just noticed that my focus will really just lock on to any meditation object that I want to use, including my breath or energy centers. I also noticed that after focus sessions using the sensei headset, my motivation and focus is just on a totally different level. I can just start writing and really get into work immediately. Sometimes after the sensei sessions, I'll just visualize my future self and just get really vibrant about what I want to accomplish with my work and that euphoric feeling really aids that. I definitely want to test my flow state with and without the Sensei by using the Neurable headphones when I'm working. I've already tested a little bit with the Muse headband now that they have the new peak alpha measurements. And I did a Muse measurement before and after the Sensei and showed that my peak alpha increased by 0.1 Hertz. I wanna do more measurements to see if I can get a larger effect or if it's more consistent over a number of sessions. I do think that brain data like this is going to revolutionize the brain training field and even the way that mental health care is done. It would be great as a mental health doctor just to do these brain assessments in the clinic and then send a patient home with homework to do. They're actually training and working on their brain at home. Then when they come back, we'd have brain data to take a look at and I could congratulate the patient for taking their brain health into their own hands and making improvements. It would be awesome. In the mental health care field, we need actual measurements of how the brain is functioning. So I think that what Sensei is doing is taking steps to a bright new future of where this becomes a lot more common. They do have study results published on their website, so I'll put some links below. Also, they are having some really big holiday sales right now, so if you want to invest in a Sensei, please go through the affiliate link below in the video description. It really helps support the channel, and I really appreciate it. And if you wanna see how this device compares to other brain trainers on the market right now, take a look at this vid, and I'll see you on the other side.